Alrighty, hello everyone. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, my name is Kim Kashmar. I am a, a person that works at Calvert Woodley and just wanted to say a big thank you for everyone joining us today for this Bulgaria wine tasting. I'm super excited about it because this is, you know, an emerging region in the wine world, a place that not a lot of people have explored. And that's mostly because there's just not a ton of uh, like exports coming out of there. And our great, one of my great colleagues, Natalia, she started an importing, uh, an exporting business for all of the Bulgarian wines because she is from Bulgaria. And um, it's been a lot of fun for her to kind of share with everyone uh, the new wines that are coming in. And the even better part is that we also have the winemakers here today to really help us immerse and explore this new region of wine. So I'm very excited. And um, as we go through today, I'm going to start off just, you know, kind of with a little intro about everyone, and then we'll get into our tasting. Um, right before that, Natalia is going to talk a little bit about the history of Bulgaria um, and the wine kind of the winemaking that's been going on in the country. And then we'll get into each of the, the wines and we're gonna be having hearing from each of the winemakers. So just to kick us off, the first one is gonna be the, uh, the Pet Nat Funky Mavrud. So Natalia is holding that up on the screen. Go ahead and pour yourself a glass of that one. Start drinking it now. It is really great. It's, a, it's like a great one to kind of kick off with. So make sure you're starting to enjoy that. And uh, feel free to be sipping that kind of throughout. I mean, you can drink all of the wines throughout, whatever you want to do, but we will be tasting them in, in an order. So we're going to start with the Funky Marud. We'll go into the uh, Gotamori's Gamza. And then the last one, uh, Natalia, Natalia is holding that one up there. And then that last wine, uh, we will have um, the... Melnik. The Melnik, yes. I was like, I forget how to pronounce it. The Melnik, the Liberia Melnik. So that'll be the last one that's red. So that'll be the order. We're going to start with the Pet Nap, but um, feel free to start sipping all of them. And then when we actually get to the tasting part, you can taste along with us. So with that being said, I'd love to introduce our five speakers tonight. So first off, we have Natalia Gorgiva. She's from Bohemish Wines and Calvert Woodley. So she um, came here from Bulgaria a few years ago and just started kind of exploring the wine industry here, um, was working for Calvert Woodley, but really always had importing uh, wines in her heart, like something that she always wanted to do to share Bulgarian wines with the world. So you may have seen her in the store kind of, you know, helping you shop for wine. Maybe she's told you about the Bulgarian wine. So I'm really glad to see so many people on here because I'm sure you know her. <laughs> and um, we'll get to hear a little bit about like what that business is like from her. Uh, we also have on here, um, uh, Rado uh, Milkov and Peter Gorgiev, they are the first um, two winemakers that are going to be talking about that Pet Nat Funky Mavrud. They have a great line of wines, and so it's, it'll be a lot of fun to hear from them. Um, and then next after that, we're doing the Gamza, and that one will be, um, that is the Bononia Estate. I'm going to try to say that correctly. <laughs> and yes. we will hear from uh, Stefan Pirev for that one. And he is one of the leading Bulgarian oenologists with more than 30 years of experience in the wine industry. So a lot of good information from him. And then our final wine would be that Melnik 55 from Libera Estate. And we're going to hear from Zhivko and Chev. And he is a sommelier manager of uh, the estate there and also was the, um, the like sommelier of the year in Bulgaria. So it's a lot of like awesome speakers to hear from today. And without further ado, cheers to all of you and let's get into it. So uh, Natalia is gonna kick us off with a little bit about uh, the Bulgarian wine industry. Hello everyone. I wanna thank you everyone uh, for joining it. Um, I was super excited in the beginning. I'm very stressed as well. <laughs> but Kim is helping me out in the, from the very beginning. Um, so I want to share a little bit about Bulgaria uh, as a, a location. Um, it's in Eastern Europe and uh, Kim will share the map on the screen. Uh, so it's located in between so many countries. Uh, on the north part, we have Romania. Um, then we have the Black Sea here on that side. On the uh, south part, we have Turkey and Greece. Then we have Macedonia and then we have uh, Serbia. So uh, 
In this location, uh, the climate has been really perfect for making wines. And uh, we do have two main um, regions, which are divided by five sub-regions, basically. Um, on the map, you see on the blue uh, area, that's the Danube Plain, uh, where uh, one of the wine is coming from. Uh, the Gamza is from this area. Um, uh, and this area is perfect for this uh, light body red. Um, then uh, in the middle, in the middle we have um, the Thracian Valley, which is basically div divided by um, three sub-regions. Um, and one of the main varieties which is coming from there, it's the Mavrut, which everyone is familiar with. Um, Usually it's a red grape variety, uh, but we will taste it today as a sparkling one. Um, and in the uh, south area, close to uh, the Macedonian and the Greece border, that's uh, the other uh, sub-region uh, from the Thracian Valley. It's, it's called Struma Valley. Um, from there, we will have the Melni 55 today. Um, back in the years, uh, Bulgaria has been uh, under communism for a while. And uh, we did have a lot of production going on, but the um, quality wasn't that great. Wasn't bad, but it wasn't amazing. And the main reason for that is that uh, uh, the business idea of the Communist Party was different to produce like very big amounts of wine and uh, to export it uh, to different countries, mainly to Russia and uh, um, like Asian countries. Um, but now, um, like after the 90s, um, maybe in the late 90s, uh, we started making really good wines because there's no communism. <laughs> and um, now the winemakers, the new generation of uh, winemakers are trying to focus on uh, local grape varieties. Um, Back in the years, we used to produce mainly Cabernet Sauvignon, Merlot, uh, Chardonnay, but now uh, we're back to the basic and uh, we have really good varieties uh, like the Mavrut, uh, like the Gamza, uh, Melni 55, Rubin is a great, great, uh, great variety. We, we also carry that one in the store and uh, many more. Um, and my idea uh, of bringing those wines, it's uh, to support the winemakers and the wine, uh, uh, the, the Bulgar Bulgarian wine regions, uh, because they're not so well known so far uh, in the States or people have seen, uh, have seen some bottles uh, here and there and uh, mainly with uh, international varieties uh, like Cabernet Sauvignon. And you can uh, rarely see uh, like local grape varieties, indigenous grapes uh, here in the stores. And we do really have uh, a great wines. And um, this is like my mission to, to bring all those wines here uh, in the States, mainly in DC for the moment, uh, because I've been working in Covert for the last three years. And um, ever since I started there, um, Cover Tudli has been really helpful uh, to bring some really good wines in the store. And I see the potential uh, is growing and we, we really have a lot of things to offer. Um, and lastly, um, I wanna share that um, the indigenous grapes are awesome. Today, we're gonna have three of them and we will start with the pet nut. <laughs> All right. Should we yay. start talking about the pet nut? Yes. We're gonna yeah. eat it. Uh, are we gonna share it? Uh, we're gonna have some uh, cheeses uh, paired with the, with this wine. Uh, mm -hmm. The first one will be the fromage de finois uh, because it's super creamy and uh, usually it's always uh, very we uh, well pa well paired with sparkling uh, wines with champagne. In our case, with funky mavrut. <laughs> And let's let's hear a little bit about the funky move road from yeah. uh, Rado and uh, <laughs> and <Peter>. amazing, <laughs> amazing there, Natalia. Mm -hmm. I love it. I love that. Like <laughs> I'm so stressed, but <laughs> <I'll come> out. <laughs> no, you're doing this is amazing. Thank you so much for that quick like 
overview of the country. I think like, I love what you said about how Bulgarian wines are really focused on the indigenous grape varieties that grow in the country and how that's sort of been like the, the goal of the winemakers nowadays to really express and like highlight how amazing all of these indigenous grape varieties are. So I'm really excited about that. I think that's what makes Bulgarian wine so special. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty excited. So uh, let's see that we had one person ask a question for you, Natalia, in the chat. And she was curious, um, uh, how many varieties do, like, do you think Bulgaria has, like indigenous varieties? Like she just kind of wants to know, she's Bulgarian too. <laughs> I think uh, it's definitely more than, more than 50 probably. Uh, okay. We do have a lot of um, like white grape varieties, um, like different kind of miskets from each area. Um, for example, if you go in the middle uh, of the country in the Rose Valley, which is like the subregion of the Thracian Valley, there is like a um, um, so-called Karlovsky Miskit. Uh, we do have this like uh, in a different way as well, like Red Miskit. Georgiev mm -hmm. and Milkov, they also make a really good Red Miskit <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, from this area. It's my other favorite. Uh, one. Um, we also have a different style of miskit. It's coming from further um, uh, south uh, from the Sistema Valley, Libera Estate. They do make really um, good uh, white blend. It's a cepage. Uh, it's um, two different uh, grape varieties. Um, also like miskit and muscat, which are local. Mm -hmm. uh, we have Kiratsuda, like which is uh, usually a white grape variety, but it's uh, well made in orange style as well. Nice. Um, <laughs> and this is only for the white uh, grape varieties. Um, the reds are also um, pretty um, um, a lot. I, I am not sure how much exactly we do have. Yeah. Uh, but there's still a lot, uh, but, which is amazing. <laughs> there's still, yeah, there are a lot. <laughs> awesome. Well, with that being said, everyone is definitely ready to taste. I can tell. So we're going to taste that first wine. It's going to be the um, Georgiev Milkov Pet Nat Funky Mabrud. Um, We're going to talk about the wine and, um, or I'll, I'll kind of talk a little bit about the winemakers here and then we will taste. They'll, they'll share about the wine, their process, and then we'll talk about the cheese with it. So please start sipping, start enjoying if you haven't already. Um, of course, we have here um, Peter and Rado. Uh, they're going to be talking about this first wine. They started their project, Gorgiev Milkov, in 2014 with their first harvest. And both of them are graduated oenologists and longtime friends, which is really fun. And they collectively, they both have worldwide experience working in winemaking because they've worked in different wineries all around the world before they started their own. So their goal, um, and specifically they're in the Plovdiv area of Bulgaria, which is in the, the Tracian Valley. And their goal is to emphasize that uh, area and make wines exclusively from the three vineyards in their location. So with that being said, uh, Rado and, um, let's see, Rado and uh, uh, Peter, feel free to jump in. And can you tell us a little bit about this first grape that we're having? Good afternoon from us. <clears throat> uh, we are having the partner here. So uh, we've started together with Rado 2014. And our idea was to, we started the project with uh, the idea to make some experiment with the Bulgarian varieties. So 2014, we started with Mavrut and Vopin. And the whole idea after that was to, to show a little bit the modern side of the Bulgarian varieties, the Bulgarian native varieties. So 2017, uh, we decided to, uh, to do this uh, sparkling pet nut from Mavrut. So uh, Mavrut is a uh, um, uh, red, a red grape variety, basically, uh, but we decided to produce some sparkling wine because the uh, the variety uh, has really good acidity. So we, we decided that uh, that will be a nice try. So 2017, we've started with the pet nut. So the first two vintages was a little bit more uh, colored than the 2019 and 20. So the first two vintages, 17 and 18, there was like a rosé. 
So we are, so basically we are not, uh, it depends, uh, either it's rosé or the um, more like a Blanc de Noir style. It depends how much extraction we get and how, how ripe are the grapes. So we are using one and the same vineyard for uh, the pet nut and the uh, red fruit. We are harvesting the grapes from Novi Izvor. It's pretty old uh, vineyard. It's more than 50 years old. And they are plant in, in this vineyard, uh, uh, the vineyard is planted with the two clones of Mavrut, clone one and clone two. So uh, the big difference between the both clones, uh, they are, uh, both of them, they are with really big bunches, uh, but uh, the berries of clone one are bigger than the berries from clone two. And uh, the other difference is that uh, clone one gets ripe pretty late and uh, clone two uh, get riper earlier. So basically a uh, clone two could be ripe by the end of September. Uh, and then clone one could get ripe. Sometimes if the uh, weather is pretty rainy or cold, you, more or less you are not able to get it ripe enough for red wine. So in the pet nut, uh, we are using mainly clone one, more or less like 70% of clone one, and the rest is 30% uh, clone two. So Rado could uh, tell a, a little bit more about the technology or everything else. <laughs> well, um, I will start. Hi, uh, everyone from me. Good afternoon. Uh, this... Uh, this, the idea behind uh, the pet nut is that we wanted to, to create something uh, destined to younger people, something that is uh, really um, attractive and uh, easy to drink. Uh, that's why uh, we focus it on something sparkling that can be in, that you can enjoy during all day, less alcohol, very. Uh, so very modern, let's say. Uh, about the technology, uh, we harvest grapes at the end of September. Uh, the target is to harvest at about 10.5, uh, 11 of alcohol, of potential alcohol. Then uh, we crush the grapes, so we direct press them uh to low pressure to don't uh, extract too much color and um, don't extract too much uh the wine uh, then uh is uh clarified so the the juice is then clarified and we start spontaneous fermentation at the end of the at the end of the process uh we close the uh, we close the fermenting wine in the bottle. So the process of fermentation continues in the bottle. And few months after this, uh, uh, we are turning upside down the bottle. So the, all the leaves can go in the, in the neck. And we do a simple uh, disgorging uh, and then top with the same wine. So the whole process continues about six to eight months. And the other thing uh, which is very interested, uh, interesting is that uh, the wine is unfiltered. Uh, it's completely natural. So we don't add SO2, no sulfites added, no uh, any kind of phenological products. It's uh, completely natural and it's a perfect uh, example of the fruit of the vineyard that we work with. Uh, this wine is uh, disgorged at February 2021, so <clears throat> uh, so now it's already eight months in bottle, let's say, something like this. All right, amazing. Now, um, Peter and Rado, could you guys share what the tasting notes are for this wine? So as people are tasting some aromas they could look for that are typical to the Mavrud grape. Well, uh, it's typical for the Mavrut grape is the, 
what to say. It's um, in this one particularly, you can find very um, uh, slight yeasty aromas like um, bread, mm. toast bread, uh, green apple, a bit uh, as well. Some flowers. Uh, it's uh, something that. Yeah, it's got a lot of mixture of flavor in there. And like, I think um, I was talking to Natalia about this wine the other day. And Natalia, what was what were some of the other tasting notes that you had said? You had some really good ones that I, I wanted to have everyone here too. I honestly can smell like a little bit like yeasty note, like he said. Mm -hmm. I also smell a lot of like uh, raspberry notes. Mm -hmm. um, and um, it's a little bit creamy, um, like um, you can you can smell maybe a little bit of yogurt even, mm -hmm. like raspberry yogurt when you buy it. Yeah. And, and you open the lid and it's like hit you in the, fa in the face. That's, that's what it is here. Yeah, raspberry notes they are more or less in each of our uh, vintages. So uh, some, of the, some of the vintages are a little bit more uh, fruitier. So basically this is a little bit more steely, very high acidity, very refreshing, very low alcohol. So it's... Uh, How, uh, is there a residential sugar someone was asking here? Sorry? No, how much, it's how much? right. It's completely dry. It's less than two grams per liter. Less than two grams per liter. Okay. Yeah, it's between one. Tom. And two Tom grams. was asking. Yeah. Basically, Tom with Martin the, was asking. Yeah. With with the pet nut, uh, you uh, you have a little bit of difference between the different bottles, uh, because we are uh, the the fermentation is finishing in in bottle, so it's, it's some of the bottles could finish at let's say one gram of residual sugar at the end, some of the bottles could have two or three grams, but all the bottles that uh, we analyzed, they were lower than three. Mm. So it's between zero and three grams. Okay. Yeah, I love it. I mean, this is, it's so bright and refreshing. You get all of those aromas they were talking about. And one thing I just wanted to point out that Rado said was like kind of the goal of the wine. And that was to make it something that's really like a fun, easy thing to pop open and enjoy. And I know from chatting with you guys before, that's why you, the cap is sort of that like, uh, like pop cap instead of a traditional cork, because you wanted it to be something to like picnic with and like take out, take around, right? Yeah, it's, and it's because it's uh, sparkling, alternative sparkling. Yeah. It's not traditional methods and it's uh, not uh, it's not stable wine it's cloudy so it's a little bit more funky uh, sparkling wine <laughs> and yeah the, the idea of the crown cap is that it's uh, the wine is uh, to be easier to share and to mm -hmm. be to be able to open it everywhere yeah nice I love the wine key <laughs> Yeah, no, yeah, not having the wine key is good. And I like that, you know, Peter, you kind of answered one of the questions that someone asked here already. They said, how did you come up with the name? And you said, it's just a funky looking wine, it's cloudy. And so that was kind of why you called it Funky Marood, right? Yeah, and it's basically because uh, more or less uh, at the time uh, when we decided to produce this type of style, nobody was doing it from Mavrut. Mm. So basically it's a kind of a new face of Mavrut. So that's why we decided it will be really funky to produce this type of wine from Mavrut. And that's why nice. we call it like that. <laughs> awesome. Well, um, we do have two more questions. One of them, uh, there's Catherine H has her hand raised on the Zoom. So if you want to unmute and ask a question, feel free. Thank you. Um, so I love this wine. I think it's fabulous. Uh, my sister-in-law, um, has a, a cider pub, which seems to be the new alternative for wine in the United States. But um, I think this would be a huge hit, will be a huge hit. <laughs> so thank you very much. It's been a wonderful wine. Pleasure for us. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, it's so awesome, Catherine. I agree. And um, one more question from the chat here. How long do you think this wine will hold up? I'm assuming once it's opened, how long will it stay kind of fresh? Uh, if you if you add a if you close it the stopper with yeah with stopper it could last a week or even more because um, there is a pressure there is a 4.5 bar so pressure inside the bottle so that pressure keeps it very very long if you leave it without any stopper it could last one day two days maximum depends how full will be the bottle yeah from my experience if you close it with a proper cap for uh, that champ the champagne stopper it can, can last like six five six days easier it doesn't look usually uh, you don't uh, have to leave pressure. it to last for a long time <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah <sure. laughs> you have to finish it right away <laughs> Finish it and buy more. That's what Natalia is trying to say. <laughs> <laughs> There's no leftovers. <laughs> oh, well, and then one more follow-up question to that. Um, they, uh, someone was asking, Leon here in the chat said, can you cellar this wine? Is this something you could hold on to? Yeah, especially this vintage, this vintage 2020, you could settle it pretty easy because there is no high residual sugar. You have pretty good acidity. And basically, uh, when we, the first bottles, uh, which we opened after we finished the scorchment, it was really hard to drink because the acidity was very, very high. But with the aging, it's get very, very good for drinking. Uh, in our opinion, or in my opinion, uh, the wine starts to look very good at the moment. Yeah, so you could agree. pretty easily sell it. I have a bottle from the 19 at home. Soon, <laughs> I'll check it out, how it's aged. <laughs> <laughs> nice. And um, kind of before we move on to the next wine, I'm going to keep us moving so we're not going too long on here. Of course, we'll do a little open the floor up at the very end for anyone to ask specific, more specific questions if you think of anything else. But um, the cheese pairing with this one. So we have the fromager d'Affinois with the cheese. And Natalia, you were saying this was a good pairing because it's creamy and the wine is like sparkling. Is That's like a classic pairing, isn't it? Yes, it, it's the classic pairing. Uh, it's very mild um, and it's uh, made out of cow's milk. Uh, so it's not super intense on the aroma um, and it's past, uh, pasteurized and um, it's super soft. It has uh, a nice, uh, like, um, creamy texture. And it's, like, the perfect pairing. It's the better, uh, the better cheese to pair with, uh, with the sparkling wines. Um, and, yeah, it's, it's, it's really good combination, in my opinion. And our experts at Calvert, they gave me this advice. Jeff from the Cheesery said that this is the best uh, cheese to pair and Cal uh, and uh, Carlos was like who gave you those ideas because uh, he wasn't there at that time Carlos is the cheese expert in cover to live for like I don't know how many years like over over 20 years I think yeah more like he's been working three. in the spa. Yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, he's like um, like uh, like institution for the cheese people and uh he was saying that this is the best the best pairing for the sparkling wine mm -hmm. well i hope you guys are all enjoying it i mean cheers to you guys for all joining in with us today um we're gonna keep moving along yes thank you so much to peter and rado for uh sharing about their wine with us they have so many other wines that they make as well and you can also find them at calvert woodley so um, i'll share a special link with all of that information at the end but people are obsessed with their rubin sorry for oh yes they them. are you're no i'm glad you said that i love the rubin i actually decanted it for about 30 minutes the last time i had it rubin is another indigenous grape and it was so good <laughs> All right, you guys. All right, so let's get on to the next one. Um, and we can, we'll do some Q&A at the very end for all the winemakers. But our next wine is going to be the uh, Bononia Estate Gamza. How do you pronounce that front uh, name of That's it? That's Gomotarsi. It's Gomotarsi. super hard to pronounce. 
<laughs> that's so wrong. That's going to be the next wine. So um, our winemaker who's going to share about this one is Stefan Purev. And he is one of the leading Bulgarian oenologists. Mm. Hello. <laughs> hello. Hello, hello. So um, Stefan here has more than 30 years of experience and he's created numerous brands of wine and brandy. And it wasn't until 2018 that he joined the Bononia State Project. So he was, he, he said, you know, he said that he was um, drawn to Bononia because he saw a new professional challenge in the innovative nature of the estate and a really good opportunity in the terroir. So um, he's gonna bring to us his extensive knowledge. And this wine particularly comes from the Danubian Plain, which was that blue area in the map behind Natalia. It's kind of an upper area. So yeah. Um, yeah, so let's get into that one. Pour yourself some of that. And Stefan, thank you for being here. Could you tell us a little bit about uh, this wine, the Gamza grape and um, you know where it comes from? Okay, hello to everybody. Uh, greeting from uh, Bulgaria. Uh, the name is a little bit difficult. Uh, the right pronunciation is Gomotarci, Gomotarci Gamsa. Uh, I'll introduce a uh, uh, 2019 vintage. Yes, I, I belong to the previous generation of winemakers, not so young, because I've been in wine business more than 30 years, uh, since uh, 1988. So, uh, what can I say about this variety? Uh, Gamza was very popular grape variety in Bulgaria during the last uh, century. Uh, but most of plantation uh, have been destroyed in the the last 20 years uh, there is i think not more than 100 hectares now uh, this is a great variety with a large bunch uh, it gets a ripeness in the middle of october uh, good ripeness means it's around 22 bricks it gets very difficult uh, to get more and um, it contains uh, little anthocyanins uh, and more phenolics but uh, keep uh, good acidity the skin of the grapes is very thin. Uh, for that reason it is uh, sensitive to medium uh, during the october because uh, there is enough uh, rain during the autumn and so it, um, it is so difficult to, to produce good Gamza wines. Uh, what, I can, what can I say about the winemaking process? Uh, it is ordinary. You can pick up the grapes uh, by hand, uh, processing, the stemming, crushing, cold maceration, fermenting, Post, post maturation, aging, bottling, and that's all. But the difference is in details. Uh, because uh, the grape, the grape wines, uh, they have their, their specific nuance that uh, separate from the, from the table wines and the commercial wines. Uh, our Gamza, our Gamza uh, has um, a little bit weekly color. You can see if you have a, a glass before you. Uh, but in the same time, it is uh, uh, enough bright and ruby color. It is a criteria. So the good wine making process. Uh, the aroma express uh, strawberry, raspberry aroma and uh, herbal notes in the same way. Uh, but the palate is uh, very mild, round and juicy. 
you can taste it. The glass is very important to open all kind of aromas and to reach the, the taste, the, the richness of the taste must be uh, must be choose a good kind of glass. Uh, the palace is, uh, the palate is mild, round, let I say, <clears throat> the aftertaste is sustainable and impeccable. Uh, I can tell you some analytical dates. Uh, the alcohol of this wine is around 12.7 uh, 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 pH is around 3.7. The uh, tractable uh, acidity are around uh, 5.6 and the sugar is uh, less than three grams per liter. All right. Oh my gosh. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, when you are speaking about the wines, the most important thing is uh, to know how to to combine with the food because uh, uh, now wine making process is the easiest jobs all over the world. If you if you know if you follow some rules, you can get good result. But uh, the next thing that is uh, important is how to combine, how to pair it with the foods. So so that uh, I would like to, to tell you how to, to combine uh, because um, uh, this wine is uh, uh, very, very suitable with a wide range of uh, me of eating with um, fish meat uh, for fish for example you can you can combine you can pair with uh, salmon and uh, tuna uh, with meat as a beef fillet roasted duck as well and um, risotto risotto and pasta it is, it is a wine that you can drink uh, during the summer if you're a little bit uh, uh, chill at uh, temperature around uh, 14 degrees Celsius. Uh, but um, you, can, you can consume, you can drink this wine with uh, uh, some fruits as a strawberry and chocolate, white chocolate, and the cheese. The cheese is the most important, um, the most important part of the of the culture to drink or to drink the wine. Uh, the the suitable cheese are Gruyere because uh, the gums are love uh, very uh, sweet and not so salty cheese. Um, Bulgarian yellow cheese. Um, instead, uh, more more is um, good 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 cheese with cow milk, and um, depending depending on the time during the day, you can drink it from tomorrow to the evening. So. Uh, if we are speaking about the, the gamza as a style, as a um, style of this wine, I can say, uh, I can tell you uh, some words because um, uh, my mission to, to, to produce uh, this uh, kind of wine uh, was to get back the popularity of the variety, uh, but uh, to Gamza, because the, the Gamza lost uh, their, he, its uh, popularity last uh, 20 years because uh, I, I said that uh, the many of the vineyards was destroyed. And um, what does it mean? Um, uh, now, 
I was tired, uh, he, he, I decided to, to produce the gamza in a new way. New way. Uh, it means uh, that uh, the wine must be juicy, no, no oak, no very hard oak influence, and uh, to be more fresh, more fruity, easy to drink. And uh, it was, uh, it was a risk. Uh, but now, uh, when I, when I turn uh, in a in a past, I I think that it uh, it was successful way of uh, producing. So that's all. If you have any questions. All right. Well, we did have um, one person commented this week. This would be fantastic with shopska salad, which is a, that's a tomato salad, isn't it, or something? And that's uh, that's like the Greek salad, pretty much. It's like okay. tomato, uh, feta cheese, and cucumber. Ooh, and, and uh, some Stephane, green peppers. We... Oh, uh, some people uh, love uh, it. I, I would, I'd like, I would like to say that there is not big difference between Greek salad and Bulgarian salad, but. Be yeah, careful, based on the name, because, right? <laughs> uh, because the the acidity of the this wine is uh, uh, has a good level, and um, the acidity of the salad is uh, high too. So you have to we have to compensate it. And Stefan, we had one question for you here. What would um, what would you what temperature would you serve this gamza at? So I, I was I was saying that uh, it's in sixty Fahrenheit. It's like 14, uh, 14, 14 degrees uh, Celsius, degrees, which is basically around uh, sixty Fahrenheit. Well, it's a calculation yeah. to. <laughs> translate uh, tells us by Karen, 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 so. yeah. <laughs> All right. The wine yeah. must be a little bit chilled. Yeah, and like 10, I would say like uh, 20 minutes in the fridge right before you serve it. Yeah. Yeah. It would be better. Yeah. Right, where it's really any, good. It is really good. Yeah. And as you're sipping, I, I know that Stefan said he had some really great, like strawberry um, notes coming out. Natalia, what do you smell in this one? I'm kind of curious. So I basically smell mainly um, like red fruits, mm -hmm. pretty much like strawberry, um, a little bit of black cherry. A little bit of sour cherry too. Um, maybe some dark chocolate. It's uh, it's really light body, which I like. Uh, if uh, people are not familiar with the grape, I always uh, um, compare it to the like the Beaujolais wines, Gamay or like uh, the Burgundy style, Pinot Noir, it's light it's body. Uh, and if you, yeah, yeah, they're different. <laughs> but um, um, if, you, if you want to experience something new um, and that you haven't tried, uh, Gamza, it's a great um, variety, light body red, which you can drink uh, in the summertime. Um, and uh, this is, um, it's so hard nowadays to, to get wines below 15% alcohol. We, we start seeing wines from uh, Bordeaux, from uh, um, other areas which are well known to have lower alcohol. And uh, whoever wants to, to get something with uh, uh, lower alcohol levels, this is a great, uh, a great bottle to, to have because it's like uh, Stefan told, told us it's like 12.7 on the label it says 13 but um 
it's even lower than 13 percent alcohol which is great because a lot of people are looking for those type of uh, wines with lower alcohol and it's a, a great great wine to to have uh i i just want to say the difference between Beaujolais, for example and this wine because uh double wines uh they are produced mainly from uh Gourmet. Uh, the technological scheme during last uh, last years was changed dramatically in France because uh, it is very expensive to to keep the the old way old, old way to production of the Beaujolais. But you can sell in this wine, Gamza, for several years in the future. The difference between this one and Bujule is uh, uh, the, the life of the Bujule wines is um, not more than two years, uh, by my understanding. Mm -hmm. Compared to Pinot Noir, it's another story because um, uh, Pinot Noir is uh, quite different from all kinds of variety we can compare for nothing. Um, maybe uh, for, uh, for American uh, taste, we can, we can uh, find close place to, to Zinfandel, to, to, to some, from some region of Zinfandel that are very uh, light structure, uh, less alcohol and um, uh, really easy to drink uh, wine. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> uh, we have one um, one more question from the crowd. Is there? They were asking, are there many? Do you make different um, kinds of like Gamza wines, or do you have just like this? Is is this the only one that the estate makes? Sorry, I'm oh, sorry. They so do the... have they do have uh, two different gamzas. Oh, okay, um, this, yeah. This oh, this different the, different this kind is of gamza. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, it's <laughs> uh, it's a good question. <laughs> uh, the style of gamza, the style of wine that I'm producing, it depends mainly from the source, from the from the the grapes at the moment of uh, processing uh as you know there are there are many many kinds of chardonnay many kinds of cabernet for example uh this style of gamza gomotarci is um, uh, the aim of uh, this uh target of the uh to 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 touch these clients, these uh, these people that that they like to to drink uh, wine, uh, not to think about the wine, the wine and the moment, and um, so uh, how can I say? Mm. It's a without it's overthinking a of, about it. Yeah. Yes, yes. Uh, it is uh, as a, you can drink in tomorrow uh, during the the lunch and the dinner. Doesn't matter the the the, the restaurant and dishes. Uh, the the other gums that we are producing is a uh, Bononia estate. It's a little bit uh, complicated because uh, this wine is. Uh, more selective during the, the vineyards. We we are processing and preparing the the grapes into the vineyards in different way uh, to to get more ripeness and uh, more phenolic more phenolic ripeness because it's very difficult and to 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 score the goal of the good gums of wine is how to balance the acidity 
uh, sugar level and uh, and the phenolic compounds. So uh, I can say that, uh, that this one uh, we it's touched into the very tender oak and to to get more more life living to to celebrate more for more years around uh, six to ten years. Uh, this bon state gamza is more complex, I think, more concentrated. Yeah. I really like the other gamza too. I have it in the portfolio, but um, it's still not available in cover. We do have it in different others in other different stores. I, mean, I really like it. <laughs> Everything starts from the prices, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a little bit pricier uh, than the, the Gomotarzi Gamza. But um, I think uh, some restaurants uh, are um, going to have it soon. Because I just started importing the wine. So I haven't had the chance to go all the places that I want to go. Um, so, so far I do have it in a few stores, but not in covers. <laughs> I wish you good luck. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I have it. <laughs> oh my gosh. Thank you guys. So Stefan, that was amazing. Thank you so much for sharing about this wine. We do have one hand raised from Catherine H. Go, feel free to unmute. Me again. <laughs> so I'm... <laughs> Uh, reading all the chats, I hope Calvert Woodley is going to stock up on this because it looks like it is a very good wine for everybody. <laughs> oh, yes. I will pass the word on. <laughs> Thank you. Thanksgiving is Thank stock you. it out before it's gone. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Thank good for Thanksgiving. Thank I you, Calvert. The same. <laughs> yeah. And uh, before we move on, the Port Salute cheese was the one that our La Cheeserie decided to pair with this one. And um, you know, for its soft flavor, you know, Natalia, do you have any other notes that you want to share about why the Port Salute? And then we'll get on to our next wine. This one has a very mild texture. Um, and as he mentioned, uh, we do have a very typical uh, um, product in Bulgaria. It's called kash kashkaval, uh, which yeah. is um, uh, cow cow's cheese um, um. and uh, cow, cow's milk. And it's uh, it could be very soft. It could be very hard. Uh, depending on the pr uh, production and depending on the aging. Um, but um, the portulet is also a great alternative uh, worldwide. You can find it because uh, it's very smooth and it's in um, my opinion and in the, in the I hope everyone is uh, thinking the same. It's uh, pairing very well with the, with the gamza. <laughs> Catherine says yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All righty. Well, um, we'll again, we'll open up the floor for more Q&A at the very end for all of the winemakers, but let's make sure we taste through our last wine and spend um, some good amount of time on that too. So going into the next wine, it's going to be the Libera Estate Melnick 55. It's a red wine. It's got that red label. And um, our speaker is going to be manager and sommelier at Libera Estate, uh, Jivko An Anchev. And um, he graduated with a degree in tourism at Sofia University in Bulgaria. And Sofia University is like in the, the one of the big towns, the big cities there. And that's actually where Natalia is from <laughs> as well. And um, anyway, uh, Jivko, he worked as a manager at a high-end Italian restaurant for 14 years. And then between 2014 and 2017, he also was importing French wines into Bulgaria. And during that time also won a competition for the Bulgarian Sommelier of the Year. So um, with all of this notoriety, he also started working as a wine consultant and eventually uh, is now the current manager at Libera Estate. And for reference, Libera Estate is located in the Struma Valley. And that was in that bottom uh, left-hand side of the, of the map, it's that purple kind of behind Natalia. So um, without further ado, um, Jivko, please, you know, share a little bit about this wine and the grapes. Hi everyone, good evening. Good evening from Bulgaria. Uh, some words from uh, Libera. We are very, very young. 
We are just started in 2013. And uh, between 2013 and 2017, uh, we just made uh, just three wines, one white, one rosé, and one uh, red wine. In uh, 2017, uh, we decided to expand our wine portfolio. And uh, we just uh, started to, to make two uh, wine ranges. Uh, one of this is uh, Libera, and uh, one of this is uh, the second one is uh, Hotovo. Uh, Hotovo is the village uh, in the Struma Valley where uh, our um, vineyards are. Uh, we have 35 hectares of uh, different uh, varieties. And the first step is uh, our local varieties, like uh, the, this uh, Melnit 55, or the, the, um, the old variety, the Shiroka uh, Melnishka Uza. It's very difficult, but uh, it's our Bulgarian uh, ancient uh, variety. Uh, also, Kerat. Suda or Sandanski set. These uh, two are white. Uh, we are a small producer in this uh, very, very wine region. Uh, the weather is hot, very hot in the summer. And our uh, hot of all, hot of all means it's hot on the summer. And uh, we are nearby Melnik. Melnik is also uh, just the, the smallest town in uh, Bulgaria. Uh, the valleys in the Struma Valley is extremely interesting. There are characteristics by mild winters and hot summer, I could say. And uh, a, few, a few mountains uh, surrounded uh, us and uh, that is also very, very important to, to us. Uh, how can I make? Uh, we are just making uh, not uh, so many wines, but uh, our uh, heart is in the vineyards, and uh, we just uh, want to uh, to show the the real face of the Bulgarian wine and the Bulgarian varieties. Oh, that's Is wonderful. That <laughs> wonderful. Oh. So in the, in this Melnick 55, what are like um, some of your favorite like aromas that you get out of this wine? Like what's what's special about it? Uh, this Melnick 55, it's uh, 2019 and uh, um, it's uh, just in uh, inox. It's not uh, in barrels. In uh, Libero Ranch, we uh, don't put the, the, the wines in barrels. We just want to to show the real face of the variety and the terroir uh, here. Uh, the first one uh, I can uh, see is the, the ruby cover, the deep ruby cover and uh, aromas of uh, um, ripe fruit and uh, walnut leaves. <clears throat> it's very, very typical for the Melnik 55. In the taste are shells of uh, mulberry and uh, sour cherry also. And uh, the wines is, uh, this wine is with a uh, good tannins in the, on the palate and the uh, final. The final is medium or uh, medium long but it's so fruity and fresh on the mouth. Sorry, I was muted. Um, we have one question in the chat here. And what foods are good to pair with this wine? I recommend this wine with uh... Uh, some typical Bulgarian uh, dishes uh, in the Struma Valley for uh, in the first step. Also with uh, traditional Italian uh, food like uh, pasta with tomato sauce, uh, red meat, uh, for example, lamb. It's uh, ro roasted lamb or 
some smoked cheeses or uh, yeah a smoked cheeses and uh, pasta with tomato sauce with uh, some mushrooms also uh, the perfect temperature for this wine is uh, 16 degrees or about like 65 fahrenheit okay <laughs> Amazing. Well, we have another question here, and this is a question that either Natalia or any of the winemakers feel free to ask them. It says, what is the soil like in Bulgaria? And I know that the soil is going to differ per region. So, uh, Jivko, what is the soil like in the Struma Valley? The soil is uh, dom uh, dominantly sandy. It's uh, very, very poor. But uh, for our uh, varieties, it's a very, very special one. Yeah, that's, that's for the Struma Valley. Yeah. Um, Rado or Peter, can you tell about the soil in At the Trishan Valley? Uh, uh, no bees from a fruit. It's basically black earth, and then uh, it's a mixture of cinnamon forest soil as well. So it's pretty pretty interesting because the place is uh, really uh, next to the mountain, so it's a really beautiful place. So it's cinnamon forest and black earth. And the red misket actually uh, comes from a different, a little bit of different area. Yeah. So the soil there, it's it's pretty sandy, right? Yes. It's, it's very sandy. Yeah. It's very sandy. It's diluvial soil as well because it's uh, Strama River is on one side of the block of uh, red misket, so it's diluvial soils and sandy soils. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but uh, red misket is it's in the heart of Rose Valley, so it's. Uh, uh, basically, uh, there is more or less 60, 70 kilometers, the boat vineyards. So Novi Izvor, it, the, the, diff, the distance between the, the Red Misket prolonged vineyard and the Novi Izvor, uh, from where we're getting the, the Mavrut grapes, for the Pet Nut and the, the Red Mavrut, Novi Izvor, the, the distance is between 60, 70 kilometers. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Um, we have a few more questions coming in, kind of going back to Jivko. So some people wanted to know, how long would your Melnick 55 cellar? I think uh, three, three to five years. Okay. And uh, the same person asked a question, do you think the wine's at its peak? Do you think like it could still develop over time in that three to five aging period? I believe it's, um, it's really, really, um, um, really good for the moment. And I think maybe in a year it's gonna get a little bit different character it's gonna develop more like uh secondary and tertiary aromas um but for them for right now you can taste more like uh uh dark fruits uh and like uh some cherries but with the time it's gonna get more like probably leathery notes even though it doesn't have an oak aging, uh, the grape itself, it's uh, gonna get this character with the time, with the aging in the bottle. Mm, nice. <laughs> um, and just overall, before we kind <clears> of <throat> talk about the cheese and then open up the floor for any last like minute questions, but what's the overall climate in Bulgaria? And like, I'm sure it varies based on different parts of the country, but you know, what makes it so good for growing grapes, especially the indigenous ones. Feel free to jump in Italia or if any of the winemakers want to. <laughs> okay, I, I, can, I can say something about it. Okay. So here in the middle of the country, we have a very big range of mountains. Um, and in the um, north part of uh, Bulgaria or mainly in the Danube Plain River, it's a little bit cooler, the climate, um, which makes it uh, um, 
perfect for uh, a lot of uh, white grape varieties and also for the light body ones uh, like the Gamza. Uh, we do have a lot of Pinot Noir grapes uh, coming out from this region, a lot of like uh, white grape varieties like uh, Riesling, Gewürztraminer, Chardonnay, um, or the local uh, grape varieties uh, uh, like white and red. Um, most of the Sauvignon Blancs also come from this area. Uh, from the middle uh, of the country, right after the, um, uh, the mountain range or um, on the slopes of, the, uh, of the, some of the range, um, um, the mountain range there are uh, pretty much uh, red grape varieties. We do have really good uh, white grape varieties uh, and in the, uh, in the uh, south area of Bulgaria are coming most of the red, red grape varieties like the Mavrut, Rubin is great also um, in the, here in the yellow area. Um, and uh, the climate, uh, it's, uh, if you look at the map of Europe, um, it's the same parallel like the Bordeaux uh, climate, it's parallel for 44. Um, that's usually the perfect climate for, uh, for grapes, uh, especially uh, red grape varieties. But like we mentioned already, it's really different and it varies uh, from, from uh, the north part to the south part. It could be very different. If someone wants to say yeah. something in addition, <laughs> yeah, more or less we have uh, four seasons. We have seaside, we have mountains, so all this. In all of yeah. The as well. <laughs> yeah, we have a really good uh, luck with uh, the location because the seaside is very close uh, to some of the vineyards, and. Uh, we have been producing wines for many years just because we are located in between Asia and Europe. Um, and uh, it's like almost like the Silk Road. So we, we have found a lot of like trays from uh, like old vessels for winemaking. And um, it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty old wine country, even though the Georgians want to take <laughs> the, the, uh, the competition about being the oldest wine country. <laughs> oh man, yeah, I mean, it's, it's so, it's great. I mean, I've totally loved all of this. And before we forget to talk about the cheese, Natalia, this one, the Melnick 55 pairs with the old Amsterdam, which is the aged Gouda. And um, what about mm -hmm. this one? I know it's like got some good saltiness too, but what about it makes it a good pairing? It's, it's really salty. It's very, uh, it's very um, hard cheese. It's almost uh, have these like crumbles. Um, you can uh, you can taste the difference between the the port salute and the the aged uh, gouda. Um, it's one of my other favorite uh, cheeses that I really like. It's super sharp, salty, and uh, it's a great uh, combination with the Melnik because it's uh, more like a medium to full body wine, and it has it needs a little bit more um, rich character uh, cheese to pair it pair it with. And I think it's, it's a good one. <laughs> and with some crackers, just to clear out your palate uh, between uh, the wines. That's why we chose uh, the plain crackers, which are, uh, doesn't give you too many other flavors to, to mix it up. <laughs> amazing, thank you so much. Oh my gosh, we, this has been so amazing. Um, before we go, there's a few more questions I just want to get answered um, because we have everyone here. And so if anyone wants to hang on for a little more, that'd be amazing. And we also have uh, more wines from each of the winemakers that we talked to tonight available as well at Calvert Woodley. And I'm dropping the link in the chat too, but I'll send everyone an email. There is, we have a, well, Natalia's been bringing in a lot of their wines, different types, not just what we had tonight. So on that page, you'll see a lot more and a lot of other great ones to try too. So uh, with that being said, we had one more question for Stefan and someone wanted, uh, Sandra wanted to know, could you explain again what the Melnick 55 grape varietal is? Uh, also now, 
The first step is uh, the old variety Shiroka Melnishka Uza. This is the ingenious native Bulgarian variety. And the Melnik 55 is a crossing between this uh, native variety Shiroka Melnishka Uza and the French one uh, Valdigier. Awesome. So it has a little bit more thick skin. That's why you can see like uh, in the glass, uh, it's a little bit darker than, it's much darker actually than the gamza. Um, it's because of the, the thickness of the skin um, and the grape itself, it's, um, it's pretty um, like the, the bunch of the grape, it's uh, quite big. Uh, I was back uh, back in Bulgaria while uh, they were um, doing the harvest time, um, and I was able to see yeah, and I was able to see most of the the grapes at their peak, and we we visited some of their vineyards, like almost like three weeks ago. <laughs> Amazing. I love it. Well, um, we're coming to the end here. We had another question to tell you. This one's for you. Um, and I think this will be a fun one for you to answer. Catherine wants to know, will you be organizing a tour? Yes. As, <laughs> as long as they open up the build, the, the um, uh, borders, I'll be, I'll be more than happy to organize the tour. And uh, we do have really good uh, wineries. Um, and even though right now it looks a small map, it's pretty big country when you are there. So we're gonna need the whole week there <laughs> to be able to visit all the all the places. Absolutely, yes, at least a week. Polly says. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh man, yes. We Dan and Emily are also very interested in a wine tour of Bulgaria. That is definitely something that Ty is working on, and uh, uh, yeah, pretty excited. Hopefully, in and the world. Kim. <laughs> <laughs> I'm involved in this too. Yeah, <laughs> I will be there as well. Yeah. So uh, we'll all be seeing okay. each other again in person, which would be amazing. <laughs> but we'll keep you all updated. Um, but yeah, thank you guys so much. Uh, please, um, I'll, I'll send a follow-up email with, um, you know, Natalia's information for her import company, Bohemish. And um, of course you guys can always reach out to me too and follow up, but um, are there any other questions, anything anyone wants to kind of say before we sort of do our little closing remarks and say thanks? Feel free to unmute as well. <laughs> I think everyone's good. Well, in the chat, everyone's saying they're so excited. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> um, some thumbs up in the chat. Thanks for opening us to Bulgaria and the wineries. Very unique tasting. We'd love to do a tour. Thank you so much. Ah! And there's <laughs> so many people writing in Bulgarian in the chat. I, you know, I can't. I read know. It. <laughs> Yeah, well, yeah, I, just I want to thank you everyone for joining. Um, I was um, I was a little bit concerned how many people will participate, and uh, with the time we when we um, we were thinking about this event, I was very uh, anxious. Yeah. Yeah. Still oh, that's a nice that. shirt. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> Where you got it from? <laughs> uh, Sophia. <laughs> Great, awesome. <laughs> Thank you very much. 48 uh, people on. Thank you so much. Yeah, um, thank you guys. I was like <laughs> super excited and I'm so glad that everyone uh, freed up their Saturday and during that amazing weather. You're here and uh, listening and tasting with us the wines and I really appreciate your time. <laughs> Thank you guys. And from Calvert Woodley, a big thank you to Natalia, um, all of the winemakers, uh, you know, uh, Rado, Peter, Stefan, and uh, Jivko. You guys were so amazing at sharing about your wines. And of course, we love to have you back again soon. So we'll work on something like that. And um, thank you guys. And it was a lovely tasting. Enjoy the rest of your evening and uh, we'll see you soon. Cheers, everyone. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you. Cheers. Thanks for your attention. Have a, have a nice you. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> Thank you once again. Thank you. Thanks.
Yay. <laughs>